morning and welcome to our broadcast of today. I want to invite you to download the bulletin. If you see the QR code, is and you are watching in the comfort of your home and a big TV, smart TV, <laughs> well, open your camera and point towards the QR code, download the bulletin with the scriptures of today. Otherwise, you can simply go on your mobile device or computer to the website and go to the tab read bulletins August 25th is the date for this message downloaded my friend thank you so much for connecting with us we are very thrilled that you are watching I remind you our 24 hours Christian programming video and audio when you are on the road you remember you can save money in your internet plan just by listening to our radio if you go to the website vchurch.us you will see two buttons like I am showing you here on the screen the first one with the audio, that's the radio. And then you click there and you can simply listen to the radio, all the programs that we have as you are driving or doing whatever it is what you do. The cool thing about it is if you have a phone call, the radio will stop. You take the phone call, continue talking, or if you prefer to make a phone call, same thing. The radio will stop when you are going to use your phone for the priority, which is to make phone calls, right? But if you don't want to talk, you just want to text, simply you just text and the radio keeps on going. Remember, we have four TV apps for Roku, Apple TV, Fire, Amazon Stick TV, and the newest is Samsung TV. We invite you to install Gian TV Go to the website, the church at US, and look for the tab Watch, and then you go all the way down. TV apps, there is the link that will tell you what to do. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not ruin the produce of your land and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of Armies. Welcome to our broadcast of today, August 25th, 2024. Indecisive mind is the message of this morning. And we read the scripture coming from the Apostle James, chapter 1, verse 6, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Guide us through this reflection. When you ask God, you must believe. Don't doubt Him. Whoever doubts is like a wave in the sea that is blowing up and down by the wind. You see this beautiful boat that we have here on the screen? Who will not love to be there, right? Especially in that type of scenario. Well, myself, I own a boat at some point in my life when I lived in Virginia. And I enjoyed so much the life in the marina. Let me tell you, it's fun. It's fun, but it's dangerous for many reasons. But the illustration has to do with the scripture, because today we are talking about the problem many people have about thinking one thing one moment and thinking another thing the next moment. That is what we call indecisive mind. Friends, probably you in some point in your life, lived something like this. That you were certain that going to church and worshiping God and giving money to the Lord was a good thing. But at some point, you start doubting about it. Sometimes you wonder, is the Lord hearing and listening to my prayers? <laughs> it's a common problem. And we need to overcome that. But there is another type of individual that today I want to talk to this person. Maybe that person is you. You don't know what God wants you to do. 
when you don't know what God wants you to do and you are just trying different things, this is what I say to you. Don't go anywhere because you already arrived. And, and I'm not trying to put you down. It's the opposite. I want to lead you to get out of the problem where you are. The thing is, when you don't know what the Lord wants for you, it doesn't matter what you do. You will be gambling, and you don't know what is the right thing to do. Then is when you don't uh, make good decisions. That is why I say to you, don't go anywhere. You already arrived. And what is what you need to do? You need to start talking to the Lord God to show you the path. I'm going to show you this illustration. As you can see here on the screen, there are two boats in the ocean, and we have two different captains. The first captain, as you can see, has his hands on the wheel, and he has the map of where he is precisely in front of him. On the other hand, you have the second captain, Captain B. He has one hand on the wheel, but on the other hand, he is holding a phone. And he's watching a video, and he's having so much fun. This is what happens quite often in life, you know? One is paying attention, and the other is not. Well, what happens 15 minutes later? Well, Captain A is going straight to his destination while Captain B is totally lost in the middle of the ocean. While the time continue passing by, one hour later, Captain A has arrived to port, and people are happy to see him, and they welcome him, right? It's a big celebration. You made it, Captain. On the other hand, you have Captain B, who is depressed, and he is sending a text saying, Please, come to help me. I am lost. My friend, if you don't set your mind to do something today, you will never get it done. You need training. You need God. As you can see here, Captain A, he is on his knees praying and has a notebook where he is writing. That is how you set your mind because you are not going to do what you want. You should be doing God's will. Now, let's suppose for a moment that your life is a, is a boat. Can we pretend that for a moment? <laughs> and, and the ocean is the, the sea of reality. <laughs> the realities of your life and your boat is your life. So you will face four types of scenarios. Every day. One is when you have a soft wind, right? Second is when you have a strong wind. <laughs> Third is when you are in the midst of storms. <laughs> the fourth scenario is there is no wind. So what is what we do, my friends? Remember the scripture, James 1.6. When you ask God, you must believe. You must believe. Regardless of the four different scenarios that I described to you, you must believe, don't doubt. So, let's start sailing there in your day. What do you do with soft wind? What is the meaning of soft wind? Well, let's suppose it's an average day without major problems, right? So, friends, in, in a day with soft wind, well, you will use your regular sails and you put them there. You set your destination, and you go easy and enjoy the ride, right? It's an average day, no many problems, no many difficulties. You have your things already scheduled, and then what you do is you start just going in that direction, because you need to go places. You need to do things. You're not going to be there doing nothing, just sitting there. you got to do something. The Lord is leading you, remember, and now you have faith. So what you do is you go easy with your day, and you enjoy what you do. You enjoy your day. Well, ideally, soft wind days will be perfect for everybody, right? But some days, the wind is pretty strong. And then is when you have to 
make some adjustments. First thing you do when you have a day with a strong wind, you have all sails up because you have a strong wind. So in a day like that with many problems, you're going to use that as an energy. You know, so many people are afraid of problems. And the truth is problems are challenges. You know, many, many years ago, we didn't have electricity. We didn't have phones or smart TVs, cameras, internet. The problems that we had in the past forced people to become inventive, inventive and creative. That's how you see your life. Your problems should be scare you. Your problems should challenge you. And you say, I gotta do something with this, but you have to evaluate all your options. That's why when the strongest wind, you put the sails up, but you calculate the direction of the wind and you have to navigate toward that destination. And when you are in your boat, you know, navigating, <laughs> you have to be quick, accurate and smart. Because in days with strong winds, in other words, days with many problems, you have to prioritize. You're not just going to do whatever. No, no, no. Especially in those days, you are going to prioritize and you say, I'm going to be very, very careful with what I do. However, there are days when there are storms. The ones that we call a horrible day. Don't you love horrible days? <laughs> Who loves a horrible day? Nobody. And let me tell you something. Everybody has horrible days. There are days that simply you just don't understand what just happened here. Well, in those days when there are storms, you in the ocean, the sea of your reality, in your lifeboat, what are you going to do? You are going to put the sails down, the anchor down, you close doors and windows, and you sit still, you wait and pray there, because there is a storm outside. You just pray, Lord God, don't let my boat to sink. <laughs> in other words, what you need to do in a horrible day is protect yourself. When there are tremendous problems and horrible things going on, you know, the best thing you can do is don't go anywhere. You stay there where you are, in your home, in your office, in your work, whatever is the, where the storm is. Just sit still and you are going to wait on the Lord until the storm stops and you are going to pray. And you pray and you pray because remember, when you ask God, you must believe. Okay, but there are days when there is no wind. It's true. There are days that you don't feel anything. You just don't have the motivation. <laughs> you don't have the enthusiasm. You don't have the energy. I don't know what's going on in those days because you are just like, blow, right? Like, uh, I don't feel like nothing. <laughs> true. There are days with no wind. It's like, oh my goodness. One of, today is one of those days. I'm not hungry, or I am hungry, but I don't know what do I want to eat. It's one of those days when you don't have any energy. So in a day like that, in the sea of your reality, in your lifeboat, you're going to start the engine. You cannot trust now that the wind is going to move you. There is no wind. So you're going to start the engine, and then you begin moving toward destination. That's what you do, because you have to start doing something. You need to push yourself, my friend. Even if you don't feel like you should take a shower, brush your teeth, get something to drink, and start reading something, you know, and do small things. Make your bed. Let's begin there, okay? That day, with all the effort that you could <laughs> have, make your bed, put your shoes, comb your hair, brush your teeth, and you say... Oh, Lord God, help me here. You pray. You pray and you say, thank you, Lord, for this day. And try to see the good while you are going through whatever you are going through, my friend. You know, because you can do something still. 
But in the sea of the reality in your lifeboat, you start the engine, you are moving forward toward destination. Then you say, I'm going to start the radio. And you go, you know, with your walkie-talkie radio type. <laughs> this is boat 007. Over. Hello? Is anybody there? You're trying to communicate with somebody because you kind of, you are kind of stuck in your days. Well, talk to somebody. But you know what happens sometimes? You are on the radio. Hello? Hello? Even you can go, Mayday, Mayday. Or like in the movie, you remember? Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. <laughs> and there is nobody there. But sometimes the issue with the radio is that you are pushing the button and you are saying things, but nobody hears you. Well, that doesn't mean that you cannot hear. Days when there is no wind, it's a perfect day to hear somebody preaching the Word of God, listening to the teachings of the Bible. Exactly. Remember, my friend, when you ask God, you must believe. We are talking today about indecisive mind. So what is what we need to do? We need to believe. Somebody says, that's the problem, pastor. I don't have faith. I don't believe. What do I do with myself? Well, let me tell you this. In your life, you will always have two options about everything. Always, always. Two options you will have. For example, you will doubt or you will trust. What is going to be? What do you prefer? Do you prefer to doubt about the Word of God, your future, your health? Or do you prefer trust in the Lord, in the Bible, believing that you will have a good future? You have two options, and you make that decision. It's, it's like becoming a skeptical or believing. Nobody is going to make that decision for you, my friend. You have to make that decision. Similar is with, you want to hate people or you're going to love people? You're going to feel hate inside of you or you're going to feel love inside of you? Do you feel that God hates you or do you feel like God loves you? You see, in everything in life, you always have two options. It's, it's like it's going to be like you live in the darkness or you live in the light. What is going to be? You're going to come to church and believe what you are hearing and saying? And you live in the light. Or you don't. You always have two options. You know? You can be part of lies or be part of the truth. You see, everything has two options. Always. There are always two options. People talk about gray. Somebody says, in terms of fashion, gray is the new black. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I like the color gray. I am enjoying it. Some days ago, years ago, I think, I have been using more gray colors, even in tennis shoes, and I like them. <laughs> but in terms of values... There is no gray. When it's about believing or not believing, telling the truth or telling lies, trusting in God or not, there are just two sides of this. It's like, are you going to be cold and indifferent or you are going to be passionate and you will care? You see? And you make that decision. That's the point that I want you to get today. You make that decision. You're going to be a happy person or a bitter person. You're going to be an optimistic person or you are going to be a pessimistic person. Are you going to be a rebel or you're going to be an obedient person? Are you going to be stubborn? Be determined. You know what is interesting about this? It's the same energy. Please pay attention to this. Try to understand this. Okay, I need your attention. And attention came, my shoppers. 
Stubbornness and determination is the use of energy towards something. The difference is the outcome. The difference is the motivation. But it's the same energy. The stubborn people, boy, let me tell you, they are really strong in their views. The problem is the stubbornness will lead you to destruction because it's not godly. Stubbornness is being, being a fool, being a rebel, unteachable. But, but the energy those people have, woof, is tremendous. Well, determination is pretty similar. The difference is the motivation and the outcome. Because determination is when you know what God wants you to do and you don't give up. It's the same strength, the same energy, with two different motivations and two different outcomes. That is why you need to trust in the Lord. story in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, where there is a father who was worried about his son who was very sick. And the Lord Jesus wanted to heal the son. So when the Lord indicated that he wanted to heal the son, the father immediately shouted, I do believe! I believe! I believe! But as soon as, as he said that, he realized that he didn't have enough faith. So he says, help me to believe more. <laughs> You see, it's when you, you believe, but you are not certain that you believe. In decisive mind, but you make the decision what you're going to do. Look at what James says here in the chapter 4, in verse 8, second part. You are trying to follow God and at the world at the same time. You are trying to follow the Lord and you are trying to follow the, the world. He says, you double-minded. <laughs> it's not going to work. It's not going to work. In fact, the book of Revelation, speaking about what is the end times and applies constantly to end times of a person, not necessarily end times of the human kind history. This is what the Lord says. You are not hot or cold. You see, I wish that you were hot or cold, but you are only warm, not hot, not cold. You are in the middle, you see. That is what the Lord says. That is the reason why he says, I am ready to spit you out of my mouth, my friend. You need to make up your mind. Let me show you this other illustration, which is very interesting Speaking about discipline and how discipline is connected with faith. There are two individuals, both begin the same way. They are cooking some food and they have a little place there to sell the food in a corner on a town, right? The two individuals are pretty much in the same place, in the same town, Cooking food, selling it. Let's suppose it's the same type of food, okay? The difference here is the disciplined person, the first one, is there whether it's a sunny day or a rainy day. Is there all the time at that particular hour because people are starting to come there to find food and buy food. So this person is very disciplined. The other person says, it's too hot today. It's raining today. Customers are walking by, but when they don't see him some days, they, he's not there at the same time. They just say, uh, I think there is another guy out there. <laughs> what happens after six months? Well, the first person already has a helper and more clients because he's very disciplined. The second person, on the other hand, because of his lack of discipline, is the ways that he is handling his own life, has less and less clients. What do you think is going to happen after a year of that? Well, the first person now has a restaurant exactly there where he was selling his food. And now he has three employees. 
Now, person B now, he moved to another corner, and now instead of selling food, he is selling phones, cases, and chargers. He changed activity because the issue was the activity, he says. <laughs> we know the truth. Here we go again with the same concept of discipline. Here is the person A going to the restaurant in a sunny day and in a rainy day. But person B keeps doing the same thing. Too hot, it's too much rain, I'm not going. After two years of this, what is what happens? Person A is happy with tons of clients there in the restaurant. Person B is sad, bitter, and broke. You need to be disciplined. All begins when you learn to read the Bible every day and you go to church every Sunday, as you can see here. Reading the Bible with discipline in worshiping God every single Sunday. That's the way to go, my friend. You know what the Lord Jesus said to that father that was searching for the Lord to heal his son? The Lord Jesus said to, his, to this man, What did you say if you can? Because this father wanted a miracle from God. Do you want a miracle from God? Are you longing for a miracle of God in your life? He will do it to you. But the Lord sees your heart, and maybe the idea that is going on inside of your heart is the same idea that was in the mind of this father. <sighs> okay, if you can, if you can. Is it possible that God cannot do something? Or maybe God is able to do everything. What is going to be? You see, in life you always will have two options. And the one who makes the decision is you. It's not the Lord. It's the same Lord God Almighty. There was a situation where there was a huge crowd, thousands of people, and the Lord wanted to feed them. Somebody brought fish and bread. The Lord took that, gave things, multiplied the food. Thousands were fed. You want to see the provision of God in your life? You must believe. You need to bring the Lord to the Lord what you have. You know, in that moment when this man really worried for his son's health, asked Jesus to heal him, and the Lord said, I will. The man was doubting and asked, if you can. The Lord Jesus was upset because it's an insult to God when you are thinking, well, if he can, it's an insult to God. Of course he can. But the answer the Lord Jesus gave to this man was, all things are possible for the one who believes. The one who believes. You are the one who has to make that decision. And you know, your ability to believe is exactly the same ability that I have to believe. It's exactly the same ability that anybody has to believe. We are all equal in that matter. We all are made by God with the ability and the capability to believe. But believing comes by hearing the Word of God. The problem is you don't hear enough of the Word of God. You don't go to the Bible. You don't go to church. And the problem, the, even the, more, the, the worst problem that you have is when you are hearing and listening, you kind of understand, but you don't want to do what the Scripture says. Then you have a problem. 
And I can tell you this, the only way that you can get out of this situation is through repentance. Confess your sins before the Lord because not believing in His power is a sin. It's an insult. You are offending God. Do you realize that you offend the Lord God when you doubt? You don't trust Him? It's an insult to the Lord God. You must believe in Him. You must believe the Word. For example, when it's about salvation, the Lord Jesus said it Himself, John 3, 16, God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son so that everyone who believes in Him will not be lost but have eternal life. He said it Himself. Everyone who believes in Him, who believes in Jesus as the Son of God, is the only condition to receive the forgiveness. But what if you keep thinking that you are not forgiven by God, that that is why your life is this and that? It's because you are not believing and you are offending the Lord. Let me take you to another scenario, which is the scenario of healing. Healing is possible. For many years I have been visiting people in hospitals. So I became a chaplain for years. Years going to see people in the hospitals. I have visited people in their homes that are sick. They come to the church sick. I have been sick. <laughs> my wife, my children. Illnesses are part of this life. But something very interesting that individuals that prepare very thorough statistics have discovered is that in hospitals, the majority of patients that get out of the hospital feeling much better are those who have some type of faith. Because they decided that they needed to get out of there illness out of the hospital and start to recover because they wanted to feel better and do better. The miracle of healing will happen the same way when you want it. But if you don't want to get healed, it's not going to work for you. This is scripture on the screen, Isaiah 53, 5, says clearly that we are healed because of His pain. But it all begins when you hear it bring it to your heart, accept it, believe it, and move in that direction. And then you're going to do whatever you have to do. Exams, doctors, I don't have this, I don't have that. Believe that He will provide. That is what we are talking today. So you can be saved and have eternal life and be forgiven by God if you believe. You can be healed if you believe. You can receive prosperity, you can move forward, your life is going to be much better when you learn to believe. You make that decision, my friend. Not your mother, not your father, not your spouse or anybody else. I cannot make that decision for you. It's up to you. Believe. Open your heart, confess your sins and say, Lord God, I confess my sins. I am not being good to believe. Help me to believe like that father said. So what do you do after that? Well, you stick with the program. You read your Bible every day and you go to church every Sunday. Your life is going to be so different, my friend. Next Sunday, I'm going to be teaching about conquering fear every time. That will be September 1st. The next one, September 8th, I'll be talking about how to handle the fact that people are alone, more and more alone in these days. And then the following one, September 15th. <laughs> Everyone hates the boss. <laughs> You're gonna love them. I'll see you next time, my friend. Remember to share this message with your friends. Indecisive Mind from Odessa, Texas. And one more thing, you have a question? Do you want me to speak about a topic? It's simple. Here's the email address, info at the church.us. 
send me the question and I'll be delighted to write that message for you. Until I see you next time, I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. One of the most wonderful things in the Bible is the promise from God to a believer to be abundantly blessed when the believer gives to the Lord the first fruits of his work and labors. Learn this promise in Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Test me in this way, says the Lord of armies. Bring me the 10% of your income and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not ruin the produce of your land and your vine in your field would not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of armies. Thank you so much for connecting with us. We are very thrilled that you are watching. I remind you our 24 hours Christian programming video and audio. When you are on the road, you remember you can save money in your internet plan just by listening to our radio. If you go to the website bchurch.us, you will see two buttons like I am showing you here on the screen. The first one with the audio, that's the radio. And then you click there and you can simply listen to the radio, all the programs that we have as you are driving or doing whatever is what you do. The cool thing about it is, if you have a phone call, the radio will stop. You take the phone call, continue talking, or if you prefer to make a phone call, same thing. The radio will stop when you are going to use your phone for the priority, which is to make phone calls, right? But if you don't want to talk, you just want to text, simply you just text and the radio keeps on going. Remember, we have four TV apps for Roku, Apple TV, Fire, Amazon Stick TV, and the newest is Samsung TV. We invite you to install Gian TV, go to the website, the church at US, and look for the tab Watch, and then you go all the way down, TV apps, there is the link that will tell you what to do. If you own a Roku TV, a Roku TV device, an Apple TV device, or own a Fire Stick, we invite you to install the Gion TV app. With the Gion TV app installed on your TV, you will be able to watch all the videos from the comfort of your home and be inspired with our programs. Enjoy music, inspirational videos, Bible teachings, and beautiful videos that will keep your tank of faith full all the time at the touch of a button. Remember G on TV. Receive the inspiration to achieve your calling in life. By Giancarlo Vicitoro. I know you have suffered, but what if you would have never met your mom because she died giving birth to you? That's the beginning of Simon's story. Then Simon's father died when he was only 15 years old. He was sent to a foster home where he was bullied, humiliated, and there was no one to protect him. But Simon decided to find a way to get his revenge by studying and becoming good at sports. He won a scholarship, and soon he started his own business, Simon Yardwork. Mean people were envious of his success, but one day, Simon met and fell in love with Jackie. They were happy until the FBI arrested Simon due to clues that incriminated him with several murdered people. Will Simon end up in prison? Don't miss the outcome of this story, The Best Revenge, the musical that will inspire everyone to pay good for evil. Go to mygiancarlo.com to purchase The Best Revenge on audio and video. Also you took all of my tears You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You make me feel loved, you make me feel good I love your words, you changed my world You are my moonlight Yeah.
Even when I feel that I'm ready Ready to quit and give up Ready to throw the towel of my life away It is on those days when I realize How weak and fool I can be Considering my situation I cry out Where are you God? You promised me to be with me here all the time You said that I will not be alone You promised me that you will be with me No matter what, no matter what And I know you are mine Here with me all the time You sustain my life You are by my side No 
more sad days. Now all is bright, the sun is shining with its light. I feel the wind blowing off my skin. I feel your love coming, you're my spring. The winter is over, no more snow. My heart you filled with your love. Now in my home I hear the birds. I see the kids playing, boys and girls. Like the ocean wants the moon, like the grass needs the rain, come and take my pain away. How can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, how can somebody fix my heart? My life is falling apart if only there was somebody who sees that I'm not. Nobody, sing to me a love song again, fly me on your airplane. Start tonight, I need you badly in my life. It is absolutely amazing what I am feeling. Never before I experienced what you have done to me. I know that in the past, I didn't see things as I do now. But honestly, you have changed everything for me. And uh, I don't want to let it go. I don't want you to go anywhere. Stay here with me, by me. Because you make me feel alive. And I know that you love me, and I love you. I love you with all of my heart. I belong to you. You brought me a new life, a life that is absolutely profound, real, and true. I feel alive. You make me fly. You are so right, you are my sorry. 